Hello, my name is Amy Hong Liu, an undergraduate student from NYU Shanghai. The paper I will be presenting today is titled Airbnb Pricing Based on Statistical Machine Learning Models. And here comes the outline. Firstly, I will discuss my motivation for doing Airbnb pricing by using machine learning models and significance of my work together with the difficulty I met. Then, I will give a brief introduction to the models. Next, I will show my MPA, missing values, and the feature engineering work. Lastly, I will present my experiment together with its result and the proposed some future work. Now, let's begin with why doing research on Airbnb pricing. This is because Airbnb is a platform where appointments are made in advance, and thus it is especially important for Airbnb to predict future uh, house prices equity and offer reasonable prices to attract more guests. However, according to Edison Glaser, the built-in pricing suggestion tool in Airbnb is not accurate enough. And if hosts go to a third party like hosting and beyond pricing, they need to pay a lot for the outcome and are still unable to know how a certain price just chain is offered. To solve these problems, machine learning models are optimal solutions and they can learn from data quickly, which makes the cost relatively low. What's more, machine learning models can discover the hidden relationships between factors and a target by using feature importance. Also, I expect machine learning models to give more accurate results. Unexpectedly, in previous works on machine learning pricing, scholars didn't achieve a high enough accuracy. For example, when predicting warehouse rental price, my joint pen found the random forests with the highest R2 score, 7.57. And the paper Leo got the results that gradient boosting has the highest R2 score, 0.418 when doing his price prediction. Gaining insights from some researchers, I made the following improvements to achieve a higher accuracy, while XGBoost offers R2 score 0.6321. My research does good compared to previous works based on the following reasons. Firstly, I applied more advanced machine learning models like XGBoost. Secondly, I used a relatively large data set which contains 7,833 samples. Thirdly, I took all the features, including text information, into consideration. My research also reflects future importance, which can provide insights into how suggestions are offered. The main difficulty of this work includes dealing with a disorganized data set, having missing values, interfering features, and the textual values, which requires careful EPA missing values handling and future engineering. Another difficulty is the selection of hyperparameters to guarantee the model success. Recursively using cross-validation based on which I can select a more precise value range contributes to the final hyperparameter choice. Now, I will introduce the models I use. I use KN and MLR as benchmark models and applying some advanced models. So the fast models are regularized regression, including a soul regression and a rich regression, and the tree based models, including random forest, gradient boosting, and extreme boost. For K9, its prediction value is obtained by averaging the K nearest neighbors, where the value of K can be decided by minimizing the mean square error shown in the slide. For MLR, it follows the form y is equal to x times beta plus epsilon, where x is a data matrix, beta is a parameter factor, and the epsilon denotes some noise. By applying the least square error approach, we can get a formula to solve beta and gain the prediction value. For regularized regression, a through regression is the L1 penalized model by adding L1 norm of base to the least square cost function and then minimize it. The rich regression is a L2 penalized model by using L2 norm of base as a penalty. For random forest, 
His algorithm includes two main parts. The first part is bagging, which is for generating subsamples from the original data set. The second part is to decide the best cut at each node of each tree by cut algorithm, based on which a decision tree can be determined. The random forest will make a prediction based on averaging the outcomes made by its decision trees. Gradient boosting does prediction by minimizing its objective function showing the line. Well, y prime is equal to fkxi, and the fk stands for the model in the case integration. From yet, we can see that the optimization is based on the first derivative information. The last one is xg boost. Its objective function is similar to graduate boostings with the improvements that it plus omega fk, which represents the complexity of the trees. We will apply Taylor expansion to fk and thus using the first and second derivatives information to do the optimization. This improvement enables its best performance among these models. Now, let's move on to the EDA part where I did many five jobs. Firstly, I dropped three columns, host ID, host name, and ID, as they have no useful physical meanings for price prediction. Then, based on the data set shape, let's leave 7,411 samples for training and 422 samples for testing. I also take a um, logarithm for the target price to make it tend to normal distribution, which can enhance and predict accuracy. Next, I drew the heat map to reflect the coloration of features and the price, which can be used later to do the comparison with feature importance determined by different machine models. And I visualized the geographic information by using latitudes and longitude. Longitudes. Following EDA, I went to deal with missing values. There are 40 columns with missing values. For step column, as all the existing values in yet is not column, I used it to fill in the blank. For zip code, I fill in the blank by finding out the exact zip code based on their latitudes and longitudes. For bathrooms, um, as yet contains zero originally, I suppose that the blank is due to having no bathroom and thus use the number zero to fill the blank. For bedrooms, I thought it had been a linear relationship with bed, and thus fill the blank by using regression imputation based on the bed column. To deal with bed, host response time and host response rate. As the mini mini missing rates are far less than 10%, it is not likely to be biased, and thus I use an average value to fill in. Regarding these columns, um, as they are colorated with chaser and uh, when one sum is missing, it turns out to be that others are missing too. I use the average value to deal with the missing values. Then let's discuss feature engineering. In this part, I used standard scalar to normalize training features. This step is necessary because the mean of every feature varies from around 0 0.01 to around 52, which is a too large difference. Then I did text to numerical data mapping. First columns was the data type is object using labor encoder. Uh, with all the above work done, I began my experiment. I first did hyperparameter selection. I use grid search for KNN, lasso CP for lasso regression, and the rich CP for rich regression. I also use a randomized search CP for random forest, gradient boosting, and XG boost. Based on the first selected parameters, I modified the value range for another round of selection until no select values are on the value range boundary. Here comes the model performance results based on the final selected par hyperparameters. From yet, we can see that Extreme Boost reaches the highest R2 score, 0.631, together with the lowest IMSE, uh, 59.9743, being the most appropriate model. I did not end up with obtaining the model's R2 score. Instead, I went to investigate the feature importance assigned by each model. 
From the third retrogression, the feature importance is reflected by the coefficients values. And for in sample models, random forest, random boosting, and extra boost, feature importance is reviewed by a number between zero and one assigned to every feature. Zero means that feature hasn't been used at all while doing the prediction, and the one means that the feature perfectly predicts the target. Apply the feature importance for these models and find that the similarly treat bedrooms, room type is the entire room of apartment and accommodates as important features, and the property type and the city type as less important features, which are consistent with the correlation map I've drawn in the EDS section. This work also holds an insight into how the price justice are offered and to improve on which features they can offer a reasonable higher price. Finally, we come to the feature work part. I think feature work includes adding more training samples and considering other models like neural networks. That's all for my presentation. Feel free to contact with me if you have any questions via my email. Thank you.